Greetings, YouTube, and welcome once again to the Satellite of Unrequited Love for Sunday Fun Day. And this time it is the tutu of the tutu, and yet appropriately, we have a bunch of really, really flaming shitlords. Yeah, someone lit our, lit our shitlord. Someone lit our shitlords on fire. <laughs> Sounds rather unpleasant. <laughs> I know. Well, Just joining do. joining me this morning are. Our our uh, pod father, uh, he who art in the Kool Aid vein, six six AU. Hey guys. <laughs> Bene. <laughs> Hello. You probably set us all on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Think paradox. Who? Yeah, long. To, it's been a while, but he finally showed up. Uh, I blame myself. <laughs> Marking bad. Who is barking mad? I have a bunch of Canadian Smarties. They're way better than your uh, American Smarties. Bullshit. They kind of are. Fuck you. They all, are. all of the uh, Canucks to the yard. <clears throat> and I have somebody in the background screaming, they're not Smarties, they're M&Ms. Oh, well, then we're going to have a talk and, later. And uh, we also have the two-ton dinosaur of doom joining us, Spinosaurus skin. <coughs> Hello. <laughs> and finally, we have our delicious taco. taco what salad. up? What's going on? <laughs> Not much. And I am your host, the Red Robot. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been doing this for 22 rounds. Oh, God, help us. <laughs> there is no God where you're going. You're going to the streets of unrequited torture. Join us. <laughs> Sounds like fun. I figure all my friends will be in hell. Why, uh, why not join them? Oh. <laughs> oh, no, I'm a furry too, so I'm, I'm going to be yiffing in hell, so let's get this shit started. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I looked ahead. As well. uh, I'm not a furry. Oh, never mind. Uh, here. What I've seen of you, man, you oh. are furry. If you can my We're also now joined by someone whose tag is Violet, and they have an uh, icon. Who the hell is That's that? That's Lexi. Oh, it's Lexi? Lexi? Okay. Hello, Lexi. Hi. So we have new people. Oh my god. New yeah. people. <laughs> Although yeah, new, new people. relative speaking. Huh? So uh, uh, today we're going you know, where everybody else is already gone? <laughs> well, actually, before we do that, since we have a couple of new people, uh, I and there's a small chance that the, the our viewers may not have heard of them before, I want to do some, give some, an opportunity for a small introduction since I usually skip through the people that everybody already knows. So, uh, Think Paradox, uh, give us a short thing about yourself and your channel, or channel. Well, I am a theoretical physicist. I answer physics-related questions, and since I don't really get a lot of those in, I just browse the deep web and show you guys what's actually on the uh, area of the Internet that Google and Bing and them cannot access. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, he, yeah it is impressed. really interesting. Um <laughs> There are, he goes some scary and deep places that are really interesting and weird, so I definitely recommend them. They're, they're a lot of fun. All right, <clears throat> Lexi, give us a short something about yourself. Um, I run the channel Equal Right Advocate and the Facebook page. So I generally focus on men's issues on those pages, but I also look at gay rights and stuff. Equality balls. <laughs> <laughs> Those are brilliant. I like that comment. And my blog on the deep web is also similar. Um, I re reason I run a website on, or specifically a blog on the deep web is because attention feminists, I fucking dare you to try to censor that shit. You have <laughs> And that is kind of a well, risk. isn't that kind of a maybe my understanding of the deep web is kind of wrong, but isn't the deep web essentially something that isn't indexed by Google? Pretty much, but it goes a lot further than that. Some require special software. My blog oh, in see. particular called Fuck Feminism is hosted on Freenet, in which hmm. it's completely decentralized, so you can't even DDoS that shit. Hmm. Oh, okay. Interesting. So. Oh, it's well, remind me. Don't let me forget. Well, we might do it. Go ahead and do a segment on the deep web in a little bit. But first, we go ahead and get this out of the way. It's the one subject that almost everybody in this sort of little sphere has, has talked about. Love it, and you inadvertently touched on it a bit there, Glenn. Ha hang uh, on, hang on. I need to get a. How stick brilliant enchiladas are. 
I, I need to I need to get my big stick so we can really beat this horse some more. <laughs> <laughs> I've talked about this three times in the last two days. Well, there have been Mark, a couple of developments as well. It might be. Yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> there's a, a reason my camera's off, off okay? <laughs> I have a comment about the uh, topic from Fucked Up Friday, if I may. Well, that's uh, it was the Laughing Witch thing. That's actually what we're going to talk about. Oh, that's actually what I was wanting to talk about. Oh, hey, there we go. Uh, so, um, uh, Bane, you had there was something that you had mentioned that you that, that you had seen. So you've actually seen the videos. Um, so go ahead and tell us a bit about the apology. Oh, basically, Laughing Witch came out and apologized about an hour or so ago, and uploaded a video. And, and basically, she said she wants it all over, and and that's it. She's apologized. Good enough. Yeah, Carry on, everyone. Game game over. So, and you said that this was uploaded by someone else because she deleted her channel or something, right? Uh, it's mirrored by um, Sad Monkey, but oh, I'm yeah. not sure where it originally came from. Uh, she made a new channel. Good enough. Oh, did she? Yeah, I, th I think so. That's because yeah. Stenistrat also mirrored it and had an original video too. <laughs> I think it was just a new channel. Okay, so this is, this is like, you know, breaking news. It was about an hour ago. Yeah, something like that. Okay. I still don't think it justifies her actions. It's nice that she came out and at least acknowledged that she was in the wrong to some extent, but even then it's kind of... She, she was sending all sorts of nasty messages to Thunderfoot's employer, so... Thank you, Violet. And also you know. the cops. Which, and which the cops as well, yeah. So, and she, she's been doing this for a while. She doesn't just do it to Thunderfoot. She does it to several people. She essentially... And when did it start? Was it February this year or something like that? Something like that. Yeah, it was early this year. Uh, since I've confirmed that uh, the said hitman that's been looking for the particular individual that was fucking with my previous employer is actually illegitimate, I can actually come out with who's been fucking with me. Oh, yeah. And it, yep, it was a laughing fish. Oh. Oh, really? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Personal experience with that. Uh, I'm trying to refrain from saying the c word. Uh, that, uh, as, as far as I, as far as I know, we've never refrained from saying naughty words on this. I mean, as long as you don't take it too far, but knock yourself out. This is not not a, not a work safe podcast. Yes. <laughs> Only I knew that before. Bloody oh hell. well, I mean, you know, uh, cunt, cunt, motherfucker, goddamn son of a bitch, cocksucking. This this is why Andy doesn't want to make a radio station anymore for us. Exactly. Yeah, we'll set one up. <laughs> we, we, we we can't rest, we we if we intended to try and restrain ourselves, we might be successful for a couple of podcasts, and then someone would say something. We we'd have to have. Well, a I, I wouldn't be able to. Uh, well, I, I, I I wouldn't be able to talk about um Jenny McDerp cunt, would I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're, we're getting a little bit off topic. I apologize. Um, My whole issue with it is, I had I'd seen on Felfop's channel that that uh, apparently um, her husband has like a was it what was it a defense fund or GoFundMe or some some shit like that. Uh, hold on a sec. Yeah, okay. Bane linked it in the group uh, chat. Yeah, fund, fund oh, anything. Yeah, we'll I'm an idiot. <laughs> sure, well, what, what upsets me about this whole ordeal with Laughing Bitch is she does all these black hat tactics. So in my, my opinion, if you dock somebody or you go after their livelihood, you become yourself fair fucking game, um, regardless of the collateral damage. However, digging in deeper, I found a lot more details about the company on the deep web itself. Apparently, her husband, which is the owner slash CEO of the company, if you will, has also had criminal charges for racketeering. <coughs> Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, that was almost a spit take. What? <laughs> yeah, her I husband heard that, was, but... Her husband has uh, been tried and convicted of uh, racketeering, criminal racketeering. How long ago uh, was... How did you define that? Um, racketeering that is time running numbers games. Uh, it's uh, related to uh, organized crime. So oh, okay. Okay. They're asking for protection money. Uh, yeah, actually, that's, that's actually... Now that I think about it, that is probably a better... Um, let's it can also, uh, um, from the background, it, it can also be used as a charge concerning money laundering. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see here. Okay. The legal definition of racketeering 
Uh, I will be back extorting, yeah, obtaining or extorting money illegally or carrying on illegal business activities usually by organized crime. So it's a kind of a catch-all. It could mean any number of things. Yeah, it could be like uh, tax yeah. avoidance or something well, like that. Well, that's usually something very specific. But you're right. It, 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 it's somehow engaging in un, un, an organized un, illegal business practice, but that's about all I can get. So between him and Latin, which I don't think anything is going to happen if you try to get him to, you know, if you squeeze his balls to make him give, I don't think he'll even do so. I don't think he'll budge. What you'll really need to do is actually go after the Biz Better Business Bureau rating, which is something that the uh, Torchan denizens have been actually going after, as well as the local chamber of commerce, and that's why they're getting a bad rating on the Better Business Bureau. It's not just Yelp. We don't really care about that because we really who who looks and reads at Yelp before they do anything. You just attack their Better Business Bureau rating, and that'll re really make them feel the pinch. You know, I don't really like this. Uh, no, like I don't. Ended, uh, you know, revenge kind of game. Like, at what point does it end? Be like, I, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like that's been so, done. And people yeah, should walk I, away I mean, from. I. I, I, I've been sort of extending a bit of an olive branch to the social justice types, so hopefully um, I might be discussing this sort of thing with with a couple of the uh, with a couple of people within that community. That would be interesting. Um, yeah, um, hopefully there might be some productive conversation as to how to deal with solutions. Well, all we have, all we do is uh, we're really looking to decrease for a little bit. We won't really screw the business. Just enough to make them go, oh shit! They can build so that rating back up. It's my conviction that you need to not be dicking with other people's livelihoods and family lives. Mm -hmm. And if you if, if, if you yeah. if if you take that step, I'm sorry, there is going to be somebody out there who is willing to take that step back towards you. Yeah, yeah. Can, I don't. Like, I don't think it's morally acceptable. But exactly, yeah. the tech idea is not not the person. Yeah. Can can we just get back to just calling each other cunts and telling each other? <laughs> yeah, because this, this, this is problematic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very absolutely. problematic. I'm absolutely okay with making fun of Spino's short arms and his inability to make a bed correctly. Huh. Well, you do you realize I'm a Spinosaurus and not a T-Rex? Yeah, they don't have small arms. No, they they don't have small arms. They they. Have, <laughs> you you do right there. Don't care. Look at these arms. Look at that. We're just going by the <laughs> picture we got, okay? Yeah. That, that's Photoshop. Right Look at that. Yeah, that's a genetically engineered from Amber. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his arms would actually be bigger than that. Trapped in Amber. <laughs> So what, you, what you're saying is that, a spin, that, that the Spinosaurus we know has had surgery to adjust the length of his, his appendage. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes, to make it smaller. To make them smaller. Uh, I'm going to call hacks. I call hacks, dude. <laughs> I'm sure that's not the case, but okay. Um, yeah. Well, and to, to kind of round out the, the topic a little bit, uh, what, what I think that... Um, we, we got into this in part because there was a segment of, well, not, and I don't, I'm not necessarily going to single out the social justice warrior community specifically, but, um, well, no, fuck it, I am. But I'll, I'll explain myself in a little second. Um, I think what we got was a segment of the social justice warrior community in particular, in this case. It's not the only time it ever happens, obviously, but in this particular case, where they could not find a legitimate way to stop people they disagreed with from saying something, because that's what they really wanted, was to basically make, in the case of Thunderfoot, they just wanted him to stop talking uh, about what he was saying. They didn't want to disagree with him reasonably. They wanted to stop him from being able to say anything. Mm. And so they tried to destroy him. And I, here's, the, here's the thing. If there is, and I'm not justifying the, the, what happened, although in a way I, I, I'm having trouble disagreeing with it, but again, it's complicated. But if it, if there's any pos anything positive about this, the next time some social justice warrior thinks about this, they're going to be much more careful when they do it. I don't I don't think they will though. These aren't right. they are, these aren't they are the right these aren't like the reasonable kind of people. And, and they want to be professional victims. That's true. I had an NJW on Torchan that tried to get a post on Torchan removed, and they used their real fucking name on the deep web and doxed themselves so hard. Oh, I don't Lord. think they're going to be intelligent enough to avoid future situations. And here's here's the thing that I like. Laughing Witch having 
deleted her channel and her Twitter and all this other stuff, that is her taking steps to self-censor herself. Uh, is, no, actually, she didn't actually take her own stuff down, but yeah, yeah whatever. Okay, but I mean that was that was certainly what I had heard was that she had eliminated the stuff, but you know she had removed all of the material. So if that's the case, like I mean, self censorship is is one of the ways in which authoritarian regimes attempt to control their populations, and that is exactly what the bulk of the SJWs attempt to do. I mean, exactly like Red said. They wanted him to stop talking. They didn't. They, they they couldn't make it illegal, and they couldn't drown him out. So they wanted to make him self censor. Well, that's not self censorship. Mm. That's a uh, no. You know. it, but that's but that's the thing. Well, is the if, if you know, if you know that there is going to be a repercussion for your speech, you can either choose to speak and suffer that consequence, or you can self censor. It's my understanding her YouTube channel was uh, was you know done by herself, but uh, her, her other social media, like her Facebook account, for example, I mean this woman was really boxed hard. Her password and everything was leaked, so the and she used the same password for YouTube, Never. Facebook, Twitter. Wow! Uh, <laughs> so it was super easy to have somebody really take it down. It wasn't me that did it. But there was another individual on Torchan that was saying, "Hey, here's her password," and oh, other the other people were confirming, like, "Yeah, okay, this this is working. Uh, can log in." Oh God! And then shortly after that, her Facebook and other social media accounts just vanished. So, mm. but, but the problem is, it will will be the spin that now she's the victim, <laughs> and it was evil Thunderfoot who. Attacked her for no reason, so that that's the problem. Yeah, that, that's just yeah, that, that's the I, main. I don't think a lot of people will learn from this. Yeah, it's, yeah, this is this is because uh, yeah, the thing is with um with social justice warriors is a victim narrative is status for them. That's exactly. true. Exactly. Yes, it's so uh, essentially there is no winning. Congratulations, YouTube. Yeah, essentially they they've set up a <coughs> scenario where you can't really win either way. It's a rigged game. Yeah, I just want to make it known I am not a hacker. It was not me that did that. Well, I, actually, I I don't think there is. Um, I I mean, in her case, maybe not. But if we could get like just enough of the social justice community on board with the idea that maybe contacting people's employers and shit is a bad idea. Hey, scratch. Oh, hey, scratch. Hey. Yeah. So you know, I, I, maybe I, I don't. It. I've been listening a little bit, and I'm, I may have missed this, but. Has anybody provided any evidence that that whole racketeering thing is even true? Yeah, it would be nice. I mean, uh, because yeah. you, you can't you can't come on a yeah. stream and just accuse people of that shit. Yeah, that, that's a good. Yeah, yeah that's, that's 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 true. Oh, that's a very good point. All I heard was. And, and to me, 4chan is not the place to get legitimate. Well, that's not what he said. He said 4chan. <laughs> or he whatever said 4chan. the. Fuck. Well, well, the point is you can't, you can't come in here and make a claim like yeah, that. Yeah, you've got, you've got to show evidence. Otherwise. Well, in the case well, you'll be glad to know it was left in the comments of Thunderfoot's video in which he was describing it would be a shame if someone left a uh, comment on Yelp. So, yes, so sir. That, it's, wait, it's, that, that, that proves at this point. what? That doesn't prove anything. No, but I mean... We're, we're, I mean, no, the thing of everything is the news article. How do you think we? Got I just it? like I just like I just like how proof isn't necessary when it's speaking to the right narrative. Well, no, 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 no. It was something that was mentioned. I don't. I I I just assumed. Well, that's interesting, but you know, it's not really relevant. But okay. I mean, you know, it hasn't been proven as far as I know. It's hearsay. But yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. It was an interesting topic. Uh, I, I I'm tired. You yeah, know, I would have asked for evidence if it was really relevant, but. Oh hey, and and our uh, other uh, snack food is here, uh, Mr. Mini Bagel. Oh hey. hey. <laughs> All right, well let's move on to another topic since this one has gotten a little weird. Welcome and also, to to really, I just wanted to cover what was new about it. I don't necessarily want to go round and round again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Welcome to the deep web where there's lots attention. of lies and scammers. Oh, lies and scammers. But, so do you think it will die during the week, or just uh, there'll be round two? What's the it's, prediction? 
Um, I, I think I, that they're acting like victims at the moment because they can. That they, they, these sorts of people always act like victims when they're called out on their shit because they don't want to own up, sack it up, and essentially deal with reality. That they, they always should, want to it try and benefit up. from it in some way. So I kind of figure it won't. Well, they've gotten mm. thir- 371 bucks so far, so... So, well, yeah, but I mean, if there's an apology and, that, and that's the end of it, then okay. Wait, who's this about? Uh, we're talking about Laughing Witch here. I'm too much so, oh. oh, God, that's so, that entire situation has me so fucking befuddled by how stupid these people are. She posts her own name and rewatch the video. She says, that's my real name right there, points it out, but then calls it doxing when someone shares the video. It's not doxing, yeah. it's more like broadcasting your retardedness, really. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Fuck that. If, if you're going to share your address and real name, that's your fault. No one else I think is. It doing is, that. but at the same time, I'm not totally on board with what Thunderfoot did either. Yeah, I, mean, I, I understand agree. why I, he I did it. I'm kind of mixed with it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah we're kind of going around in circles. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh, Let's move on to the next topic. Because I just want to say this. I don't think Thunderfoot did it on purpose. I don't think he. Um. I don't think he. He. Um. He was just like, ah, yeah. If I. Um. If I. Um. Put this clip of her video in my. Um. In my video, then people will go and harass her workplace. From what I I can tell. Uh, I don't know. I think he would have known. Yeah. I. I I think. He, I don't uh, think he was thinking about it. I th- I, I, I'm I'm sure it was a knee jerk thing, and then when he got called, um, when he got called on it, um, it would be a- effort to help defend someone who was a piece of shit to you. Can you really expect him to, in that sort of state to really to to really act reasonably? Yeah, uh, that's. It's a long story at this point, so I, I think we'll have to wait and probably till next week to kind of finish off the topic. We'll see in a week. We'll find out what develops between here and there. That's yeah, yeah, we'll make sure it again next week. About even more for Taco. And we would what? We'll yeah, make we sure talk to talk about it even more just for Taco. <laughs> yeah, he really like this topic. Oh my God. I got right. just so tired. Moving on. Yeah, let's, let's move on. Um, <laughs> talk so. Fun time commenting on your videos. Andy, you you sound really weird. It's because I'm on my phone. Oh, okay. Your phone is crap. Yeah, I'm in. A, <laughs> I'm in a Home Depot right now. So. Wait, 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 wait. Thank you for demonstrating. Wait, 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 wait. Andy, Andy, I have to do this. You're a Hispanic guy at a Home Depot? I don't work here. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's one of the guys who stands outside looking for her. Yeah, for those of you who are non Americans, there's, there's kind of a thing up where, you know, day laborers, and they're, usually, they're almost always Hispanic guys, hang out in front of home improvement stores looking for work. Yeah, nothing Andy? really wrong with that, but I just had to, de- to do the dig. I'm sorry. I'm a horrible shit <laughs> Since Andy, that's the thing is that most of those guys aren't Mexican. Most of them are like Guatemalan or something. Because if they were, if they were Mexican, they wouldn't want to come up here. Because right now the Mexican economy is doing better for the average person than the American one. So, well, I, I, uh, uh, I, I would, I would draw attention with that. And so there's actually more new wealth being generated in the middle class in Mexico than there is in America, and the I rent is a whole. Uh, again, you'd have to prove that. Well, anyway, yeah, that, would yeah, be that's nice that's either here or there. Who do we lose? Oh, we lost one. Spoiler. I have a question, um, Andy. Since you're the Hispanic dude standing in front of the Home Depot, can you tell me whether or not um, Laughing Witch's husband does a good job on those tubs or not? Um, <laughs> I want to you know. know if the, I want to know if if the actual quality of the workmanship is there. It's it's satisfactory, but it's nothing spectacular. I think I think that Mark wants someone to scrub his back. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we're moving to another uh, subject. Yeah. It moves on to whether or not he did a good job on tubs. That's totally different. It's still <laughs> right his business, so evidently he's not too bad at it. Well, <laughs> there you go. Anyway, where was we? Um, all right. New well, topic. I, I, I am kind of uh, curious, at least topic-wise, I'm kind of curious uh, about to sort of. 
uh, grill uh, a think paradox for a little bit more information about the deep web. But if anybody else has another topic, we can always do it for later. Do that a little later. No, I'm interested in the deep web. Okay. So. Uh, 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 if you could give us just a kind of a rough rundown, because some of us are in the in the in the way that you would think of it, we are laymen as far as the internet goes. I mean, let's face it, we use YouTube to communicate. So lay it on us. Oh, hey, and positives here. Hi, positive. Hello, hello. Hey, Ann. <laughs> but go you ahead. Yeah, you you have I just got food, and now you let me on the stream. Hooray. <laughs> Spano just left, so. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll try and take Spino's place. I'm, I'll put on some sunglasses. <laughs> he said he was tired, so no just worries. Speak with a British accent, and you'll practically be Spino. The only <laughs> British accent I can do is the is the voice Benny does to make fun of people. Oh, oh no. I don't know about I didn't that. even know this was a British accent. I don't know yeah, what well, it's, it's a pretty good accent. I'm not <laughs> sure. What's the best voice I can do? <laughs> I'm sorry, but your British accent sounds a bit knackered. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this is just a really mentally disabled accent. Stop being such a twat. <laughs> my God. You have a giggle, you man. You have a giggle. Oh, my God. All right, all right, you shit lords. Uh, okay, what are you on a food, eh? Talk to you. Hey, Paradox, mm -hmm. tell us about the things. Well, what do you want to know about? Well, just give us kind of an overview of what the deep web is compared to. I mean, because some of us know, but let's face it, it would help to have kind of an overview of the deep web versus what we're used to. Okay, what you're used to is called the surface web or clear web. Um, anyway, the deep web itself can be pretty much anything you c that can even be accessed from the clear web, to be honest. Like, if you ever run into a uh, website that requires a passcode to enter, you're technically in a deep web there. However, when most people think of the deep web, they think of, like, the Tor network or the uh, Freenet project, which is, yeah, the dot .onion router in which you have to have special software in order to access different websites and domains. And the deep web would actually encompass uh, about 90 to 95 percent of the actual internet, whereas and surface web 5 to 10 percent. Can I clear something up? Not all. In fact, the vast majority of the deep web is actually pretty chill and okay. If yeah. you find the bad stuff, if you find the pedophile networks and the red rooms and stuff, it's probably because you're looking for them. You're not going to stumble across them all the time. Well, if you click on random links, you can. Well, yeah, but it, unless you are looking for it, then you're probably not going to stumble across it. Yeah, like, I've, I've seen deep web horror stories where people say, oh, I ran into a red room and there were people being tortured and killed and that was too oh, much for me. Like, that. Uh, you ran into a red room on accident. I call bullshit. Yeah, if you if you click on a red room, you probably were looking for a red room. And even then, if you managed to find a red room, yeah, I have this overwhelming have... urge to quote uh, um, uh, shit. Forgot the name of the movie now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you you to to Let's fire. File not found. <laughs> if you've I had read, the general uh, concept of a yeah, red room, and I was kind of disgusted by the sheer thought of it. It's fucking oh, vile. by the way, if anyone doesn't know what a red room is, a red room is basically just a live stream where they torture someone to death. Torture someone to death, yeah, and you can basically bid on, apparently at least, you can bid on, you know, how they're tortured to death, and that's all. It's fucking that's a very horrifying thought. Well, I'm, I'm kind of glad I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thing like, which you didn't know... Like, Saw, except real? Yeah, kind of. Mm. Except for, Saw is more like a death trap, but this is more like you're captured inside of a room, and you're tied to maybe a bed or a chair, and you're being raped and cut up, and your eyes gouged out. Jesus and Christ! And <laughs> and stuff that, that's and so alive. fucking glad that I haven't accidentally gone into oh. a red room. Where, where are these oh, taking place out of American um, university students. Don't they experience that in America? Well, the funny thing is, is red rooms are extremely uncommon. Um, there, there, was, there was a couple that were said to have been like they were they were very popularized for because you know like Takedown Man and some ordinary gamers uh, did this thing where they were talking about the Al Qaeda red room, which was just a old uh, 
I want to say 1998 video of Al Qaeda insurgents being killed, so it wasn't really live. And then there was the Alicia, uh, which was a uh, BS one. It was just the audio clip. So, so psycho. Out of curiosity, though, where where are these taking place? Are they in? I'm assuming parts of Africa. No, rigorous. People don't know. A lot of them are in Eastern Europe. A lot of the nasty shit you find on the deep web is in Eastern Europe or South America. You know, regions okay. that are developed enough to have a lot of internet infrastructure, but still have very high crime rates. Hmm. And even still, if you have a deep web uh, uh, red room video going up. Its video quality has to be so compressed that you can count the pixels. So it'd be kind of like pixel slicing the throat of a pixel. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, it's because the way works is that it's an anonymous browser, which means that you have to go through a couple of proxies. And of course, when you're, it's hard enough to get live streams in general to render well, especially if you don't have great internet. And proxies make it even harder. So red rooms are extremely rare because it's very hard to stream them. Uh, now, now, where, where they so fail the at... Reason they're rare. I'm sure that's the only reason they're rare. Hard where are these... Stream, right? Where oh, are these stream? Hell. Go on, where sorry. are these hard stories fail at? Um, aside from the fact that, number one, they're hard to find, and number two, they're shit when you do find a legitimate one, is the fact that in order to keep themselves up they end up having to. You have to pay anywhere between three hundred dollars to a thousand bucks USD minimum in bitcoins in order to have access, and plus you have to go through an extensive interview process as well just to weed out potential FBI agents and shit. Yeah, it's the same thing with people talk about how many hitmen there are in the deep web. Like ninety-eight percent of those are FBI honeypots. Yep. Or, or fucking 18-year-old kids in Nigeria who are scamming you. Yeah, like the black markets. <laughs> like, this is stolen stuff uh, with stolen <laughs> Apple product. So yeah, hold I, on, that Nigerian prince that wants to get his money over to America isn't a real person? <laughs> Apparently not. Yeah, but, but, but if he wants to make certain that his money is uh, going to go through, he can send me uh, $400 worth in bitcoins uh, for the initial transaction, <laughs> and to prove that he's serious, he can send me five total bitcoins, and I'll make sure everything goes through. And it has to be all transacted through the Freenet project as well. You can, you can get through me on Sona. That, that reminds me. Um, we don't want to give people the wrong idea about the deep web. Like 90% of it is just, you know, goofy little conspiracy theories or, you know, just... A lot of it is journalists who use it. Um, a lot of journalists use the deep web. Yeah, um, but apparently they're not American journalists because they're not bitching about how their fifis are being hurt. <laughs> <laughs> journalists. Hey, uh, <laughs> journalists who use the deep web are real journalists. You know, people who actually put themselves in danger to get a story. People who actually care about getting the information out there. All people who write hit pieces on fucking Gawker about how this celebrity is buzzword, whatever. I'm really starting to get sick of Gawker and all of these really shitty journalist outlets which are essentially writing these hit pieces or just typing up shit and all of that stuff. It, it's well, it's starting to get really annoying sure. at this point because... What, what, what do you have? You've got BuzzFeed, where they basically just, you know, they just package together a load of crap and then just, you know, put it out on the web. You've got Gulka, which has huge double standards. For example, you had the whole thing with Jennifer Lawrence, was it? And then you had the whole thing with, you know, Hulk Hogan, where his sex tape was released. And, you know, they, they wouldn't back down with it. Whereas when it was for, you know, Jennifer Lawrence with the pictures and everything, no, 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 you know, that's totally fine. Oh, totally unacceptable, sorry. Just, you know, huge double standards and that sort. It's just so annoying nowadays. I like this. Let's talk about the fappening. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about, talk about old news. Jesus. Uh, I, I'd rather talk about that than the last I was absolutely glorious. 
<laughs> well, I, I don't. I don't have an objection to that. I'm kind of interested in what cause this is kind of related because it is internet security and personal security related in the sense of how the happening happened, and you know the the fact that it's it's entirely likely to happen again. Hmm. With, with this, I, I sound like I'm victim blaming, but for fuck's sake, if you've got a phone that's connected to Dropbox, for example, don't p take pictures of your naked self. Have some common sense. No, that, that's not victim blaming. That's that's taking personal responsibility for your own safety. No, it, it is victim blaming, according <laughs> to some people. Personally, I don't like know who we're dealing with. Is that next, the next, next thing? Next, next, Next thing you're going to say that, like, girls shouldn't dress up like absolute sluts and get drunk as shit and then wander into alleys. Come on. Oh, is that where we're going next? Yeah, yeah, that's where, that's where I'm going. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm directing this conversation the way I want it to go. Well, I, I kind of I have something to bring up. I don't know if anybody's heard yeah, about it. Yeah, go ahead, Brett. Yes. Wait, 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 guys, guys, guys. Before we end this, I like right. the way the energy put it, where if you're not willing to, to be Porn, then you shouldn't be making porn for just one person. If you're not willing to have everyone see you naked, don't put let anyone see you naked. Yeah, no, no, I, I don't agree with that. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Stuff well, is I mean, under the internet at least. But either way, I have to leave right about now because I'm gonna go get some fucking burgers. So, Andy, dude, you're your such a race quitter. You do this in Left Dead too as well. Yeah, get some fasteners for your faucet, man. Dude, I'm sitting in a Home Depot parking lot. Why do you think I'm here? I'm not just here for the fuck of it, you know? Yeah, what do you think yeah, yeah, get to work? He's looking for work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a job at a at a much classier place, a gas station, thank you very much. Ooh, there's enough in the world. Yay, capitalism. <laughs> Yay, oh I can see it now, Andy's there. Senor, do you want to buy some lighters with your cigarettes? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, we're horrible people. Fuck we're horrible to our friends. I'm I'm mad that Birdie's not here. Who? Birdie. Birdie. Fiffin. Birdie. Are you talking oh, about Looney yeah. Well, let's, let's 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 not wander too far. Uh, Scratchy had something. <laughs> okay, so I've seen it floating around on Twitter. It's the um situation where supposedly an artist drew a picture from Steven Universe and it wasn't skinny enough, or I'm sorry, wasn't fat enough. They said, oh, the character's drawn is too skinny. And so she basically got a hate mob and, you know, they're telling her to kill herself and supposedly she did. Well, I don't know. Oh, I, don't know. I saw that on Tumblr recently. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't know how true it is. Yeah. I don't know if she actually did it. But the thing that bothers me about it is the way that people are flaunting it around. You know, instead of being worried, oh, somebody killed themselves, they're like, oh, look, see what social justice warriors do? And it's like, you know, that's not... Helpful. That's not, that's not, a, no, it's, it's not helpful, and it's also not a proper representation of actual social justice, as much as that term has been tainted. I mean, well, clearly, social justice warriors. Let's be honest. Let's let's not you know let's right. not lower ourselves to what they're doing essentially, which is trying to co-opt that term. Social right. justice so, warrior so is clearly, someone who overly cares about social justice. Right, but in the, in this case, they're not even doing that. You know, they're they're basically just being bullies. I mean, well, well they, that, that has nothing to do with. Warriors. Can I ask a different question regarding this? It's like, how weak of a populace are we putting out that something like people saying things on the internet about you would make you want to kill yourself? Well, yeah, that's another problem. But, to but be the honest, thing that I think is extra stupid about it is they were like, oh, look, they, they drove a disabled person paraplegic, and they, you know they're pulling all these terms out. And I went to the person's page, went to her pictures. She's not paraplegic. She's up and walking around. The thing is with that is I don't like the sound of people lying about her and that sort, but I, I do, just going back to what Taco said, I do disagree with that to some extent. If you've got a mob after you of people constantly telling you... If you've got a mob of people that are, that are harassing you on the internet because they didn't like your artistic license, that's kind of fucking absurd. Well, the, well, the thing is, is that... I don't think that it's necessarily just the bullying that makes these people take their lives. Obviously, they are emotionally fragile in a different... You know, they have a mental problem oh, yeah, there's, going there's on. And, and, it's, and it's this that's just like, oh, that's the straw that broke the camel's back. Everybody hates me. Time to go, you know? 
I, I, I don't know. I, I just well, feel like, you know, as somebody who's been through some real shit, that it's like people killing themselves over things on the internet. I understand why it's why it seems absurd. I mean, I don't think it's a good solution, or you know, it doesn't even make sense to me. But well, um, I think it's I think it's part of the factor of the the younger generation right now. A lot of people are growing up almost entirely on the internet. Right, like the only and, people they've ever found that understood them and are like them are online. Like they well, don't know and, anyone and, in their life that they actually get with, along with. With the whole you know digital age or whatever you want to call it. People are seeking validation from complete strangers. Like we, we post our photos on Instagram and all that, and it's like you want compliments, and then when you don't get them, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not beautiful or I'm I'm not pretty. It's generation. Yeah, so. I think it's a mixture of what positive and scratches, you know, brought up, essentially raising a culture of narcissists. Well, there's one other thing um, that I'd like to, to mention. This is relevant to a video I just made, but you we probably won't see for a while. Uh, long story, but um, I, I had done some research on the topic of oh shit I forgot his name, but the, the basically yeah, if anybody remembers the the scare about Dungeons and Dragons back in the day, uh, oh yeah, uh, and the 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 lady who uh, started the group bothered about Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, she had this stupidity to name and pad, <laughs> but it, when I was doing some research on how that started and how she got involved, I had some immense sympathy for her because. She got into this, and she found out about Dungeons and Dragons when apparently her son shot himself through the heart on their lawn, and they came home to that. And they go digging through his stuff, and they find something they they have no idea what's going on, and it's Dungeons and Dragons. But what's relevant though is that really what was wrong is he was a teenager. There was a lot of other problems in his life, and I have this feeling, my sense of if this actually happened, someone actually killed themselves over Twitter Twitter hate or whatever internet hate. I can almost guarantee you that two things are happening. One, I, if, for those of you who aren't teenagers anymore, and sometimes I have to remind myself of this, when you're somewhere in your teen years, everything is hugely dramatic. Everything is ridiculously important. Things that you will look back later and go, that didn't affect my life at all, are the biggest deal in the whole world, and that's just the way teenagers are. And the other thing is almost all of them have much more complicated lives than we think they do. And well, it's, there's probably other things going on too. And this is just like you mentioned, the straw that broke the camel's back. Right. Well, what well what you said about like oh you you can sympathize with her. I th I think what happened in that situation is that oh yeah she came across this stuff and you know they have no one to blame for what happened except exactly. for their son and they're not going to do that so they look to something that's an easy target. There's no way well, to it, was not, it wasn't like just that. I mean, it was. We have to remember back then that Dungeons and Dragons was a weird and mysterious thing. We're well, talking yeah. the early '80s. So, I, yeah, what, what again, about, I, I don't think it justifies it, but I understand. What no, I'm James that. Vance and um, Judas Priest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think it justifies it either, but I think in their grief, they, they find something they want to blame, and, exactly. you know, it's, it helps them somehow. Exactly. Yeah, I think, I think that's, that's a normal human reaction. You see it all the time. But the well, if, 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 if you look at mass shootings, what do people blame? They blame exactly. the gun for some reason. Like well, we, we ignore the person. Well, that's a whole different topic. They blame okay. whatever they think it's okay to blame. Yeah. Well, they I had somebody in my hate. I had somebody in the comments section of my one of my videos yesterday say video games do cause violence, uh, <laughs> even though it hasn't been proven. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. she said there were studies. It was actually the same person that was pissing you off, Taco. Oh, okay. Oh, that's that's and, and, uh, the thing is, is the the best study that I've come across, which shows that video game, games cause violence, is there's this one study that shows that people who play, you know, shooting games and that sort, tend to be a, a little bit more aggressive afterwards for a few minutes. That that's the best study that they have, essentially, yeah, that's, that's that I've idea. seen at least. And so actually, I have, I have a personal example about this um, that I th I think would work. To, to help explain the way video games can can affect your mind, um, and you know, it's just just for me personally. But I was I, I'm kind of addicted to Don't Starve right now. Do you guys know that game? Heard of it? Don't yeah. Starve. Don't Starve. So basically, it's a it's basically a survival simulator, right? It's like you're you're in like caveman times pretty much, and you have to collect food and, and it's got uh, you, you have to kill things like with sticks. Pseudo Victorian and, feel to it. Yeah. It's so so basically. After playing this game for a few hours, I left the game and I realized that my brain had basically reverted back to hunter-gatherer mode. Like I wasn't even able to form comp like proper thoughts. I wasn't able to make. I went on 
I went on YouTube and I was trying to respond to someone and I couldn't even think of vocabulary anymore. Um, <laughs> and it's because my brain had totally been immersed in the game and I was in the, at the same level of the game. So if you spend like four hours playing a shooter game, um, a war simulator game, you're going to come out and you're going to be in combat mode. You know, I'm curious. Be... Uh, I'm curious, positive. When you were playing the game for Don't Star for so long, and you tried to make a coherent sentence to somebody on YouTube, was your voice all? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, if I actually tried to speak, but uh, it was. <laughs> that comment, they'd be in combat mode. I'm like. Mm. As army well, sergeant, I would have said, I don't think that's what combat mode's like, but okay. okay. <laughs> I, know just... feeling, I know the feeling, though. I used to, on Facebook, when I was before I got into Google+, I used to play Cafe World a lot, and that turned me into a master chef. <laughs> yeah, man. I played Halo, it turned me into a master chief. Wait, no. Sorry. That's not oh, how that works. If I, if I start playing Pokemon, I'm going to like turn into the Dog Whisperer or something? Well, All right. Well, if you guys aren't don't want to engage on no, no, no. I, I, I'm just saying. Like, we're we're being I mean, our usual goofy selves. I, I'm I'm not denigrating what you're saying. In fact, I, I was thinking that actually puts me in mind of like if I I I'm more than once I played a lot of Deus Ex and mostly the original. Uh, and I will I will occasionally uh, for a little while after you know, kind of go hmm, you know, just kind of look at the room like where are the good and part of my brain goes where are the good hiding points. <laughs> But that's, I mean, so yeah, I know I've been involved in, in Dungeons and Dragons. I've played, I've, I've been involved in live action role playing. I've done medieval recreation, and I still consider myself a relatively active gamer. And I, I can't say that I've ever had those reactions after playing a game because, I mean, it's, I read a lot. I, I put down the book. I'm no longer invested, or, um, it's no, I'm no longer immersed in it. Well, this guy LARPs. I mean, like if it, if it's anything, it just kind of points out that maybe you know you need to get the kids away from the fucking video game for a minute. You know, when I grew up, my dad didn't on a Saturday morning. My dad told us to get the fuck out of the house. Like he kicked mm -hmm. us out of the house. Like we had to get go. the fuck out. You are not allowed back on the porch until I tell you it's fucking lunchtime. When, when, I, when, I was, when I was a little kid, like, I was like a little monkey. I'd, like, climb trees and shit because my dad kicked me and my brother and sister out of the house. I, I think that's just an argument for balance in general. I mean, if you spend too much time with anything, it's probably not too healthy for you. I admit I spend way too much time on YouTube, but that's... I, I, do, I do, too, and it's not healthy for me. No, I agree. Having a hurt back doesn't really help, so you're like... What what else am I supposed to do right now? I hear you on that one. I'm, I'm being a little bitch. Do the physical exercises, Taco. Just say it. But yeah, I, positive. I don't think we were really making fun of your point so much as just taking it to a you know goofy extreme. Because I because I think some people do have that where there's the, the kind of their brain gets in the sort of the mode of the game for a while and it want it wears off, but. Yeah, I can, I'm not saying it's a permanent thing and yeah, that someone yeah, would well, actually it's, it's be violent weird. after playing a video game. And I'm not saying video games would cause violence. I'm just saying that if you do a study and you had to play a violent game and then tested their aggression levels, it would make sense that their aggression levels would be high, their adrenaline would be high. Yeah, you know, well, but that doesn't mean they're going to go beat someone up or kill well, somebody. I, no, I think so. Said, though, if you point. jump into the game and you're already mentally unstable and that sort, then I think that that could potentially lead to maybe you, you know, getting some bad ideas from that game. Yeah, but, I was actually just going to make that point myself. Yeah. I mean, pe the people that are doing this are obviously mentally unstable as it is. Um, if, you take it to, if you take it to the feminist extreme, if you play a lot of hours of TF2, you'll run out wearing a lot of hats. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, it also it, it makes the argument that uh, you know there are video games and de there are developers who are good enough at turning video games into something that clearly resembles art if their product is immersive enough that you do have that couple minutes of a disconnect where you're still kind of thinking as though, oh yeah, I'm still like I, I'm still viewing the world as though I I was involved in what I was just doing in that video game. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a valid point. So maybe this is, don't starve to be art, for sure. Maybe this is like a related, but it's like kind of like high stress situations where you project your stress onto other people. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's sort of related, but yeah, it certainly could be. Uh, on a comedic note, I just realized at some point, whenever I meet Ben, Ben, I'm going to expect him to have like three or four hats on. 
<laughs> You're not just a boy. I, I prefer this Nappers respite personally. That's the only hat I'm wearing. Beanie? Yeah, some sort of beanie sleeping hat with the bobble on the end. It's, it's called a toque. toque. <laughs> it's called a toque. You fucking savages. <laughs> if you're from That's Canada, it's called a toque. <laughs> it's not a right country. cap. If you're, if Canada, you're from anywhere else, the hat of America. Hey, why don't you go back to the new prime laughing minister and shut up? Or two, <laughs> it's still a fucking bobble hat. Well, that's the other thing. By the way, why would you why would you name a hat after uh, after uh, uh, you know a, 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 the last name of a character in a in a Lord of the Rings? It's Ring actually movie? a uh, it's actually a French bastardization of a First Nations word. Oh, fucking! That explains everything. Oh, it's French. Fuck them guys. Says the guy who got built up in French Quarter. Shut up, Taco. APA for my tastes. <laughs> Listen, I had a great time in the French Quarter. <laughs> yeah, well, you just mostly told me with guys grabbing it. Yeah. So. yeah, well, I just wanted them to buy me a drink. I wasn't really that pissed off that he did it. It's like, hey, listen, you know, pay up, listen, the rental fee for getting for copping a feel is at least one beer. You know, I could have went on the on the Twitter and bitched about it, or I could have, could have got a free drink. I was looking for the free drink. <laughs> <laughs> So, so shall we move on to that uh, that absolutely stupid thing that I was I found on the Facebook? All right, Mark, uh, lay it on us. What you got? So apparently, Jermaine Greer decided to go on some interview last night and has flat out said that transgender women are not women, which I assume is going to cause the the feminists and the, the transgender activists to lose their collective minds. But she is a and, feminist. And yeah, but you've got to remember there are, there are such things specifically as trans exclusionary radical feminists. Yeah, so Ooh. the context of this uh, was she's been banned. She's been no platformed or banned from uh, speaking at a university. I think as a result has, of this, uh, and she's yeah, had well, this for a long time. It's not like a new thing. It's yeah, just no, she's she, reiterating she, she, what been, she already believes. Been a trans exclusionary radical feminist for some time. Yeah. Well, male to female trans people aren't actually women to begin with. They're just men that look like women that have a vagina in tits, uh, and even that vagina is fake. They're just taken. Uh, do I really? Do you really want to describe how they just take and cut the penis up and then turn it inside out and then use the ball sack as labia? Uh, no, no, we don't really. It's too late. You, you realize, <laughs> like this is this is such a like a convoluted topic. It's just yeah. It's just yeah, yeah I'm really, to be honest. I mean, uh, I, I think really want to have sympathy on... for those people, you know, because that's yeah. that's a that's a very hard, you know, um, somebody's feedbacking. It's f fucking me up, but that's yeah. a very uh, tough, uh, you know, hand to be dealt. It really is because you've got all of those hormones going through you, those conflicted hormones. You've got a society which doesn't really understand it too well. My, um, my giant wait, 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 wait! Something about owning whores? Yeah. I said holding horse. Um, I said any horse. My issue is that uh, I keep having the conversations with feminists that you know we're about equality. We we support women's rights. Um, you're just trying to take rights away from women, and then they they refuse to actively engage elements of their own movement, which are clearly not supporting the rights of women by their own definition. Mm, that really annoys me. It, they just... look at MRAs who don't even have that much influence compared to the radical feminists that they're ignoring, which yeah, really I... ticks me off. Well, this again says something about society that you have to ban somebody from merely speaking because they're saying something yes. that like you can't handle. It's like you know how I mean, that's just it's just completely fucking childish. I, well, I don't agree with that. the banning, but I think what they're doing is you know they're pushing for acceptance and equality. So what they don't want is somebody going around saying things that are going to create more of a divide. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's their reason. Yeah. Uh, but if anything, the thing is, the thing is, she wasn't planning to speak about trans issues in the speech that she was banned from. She wasn't even going to bring it up. She doesn't even like talking about it apparently. So okay. they're banning her because why. she because she has beliefs that she wasn't even planning on mentioning. 
Okay, well, I mean, that's wrong. I, I'm just yeah, trying that's, to... That's the thing that's fucking and it's, it's, my... it's wrong, but I don't think she should be banned from speaking because of it, to be honest. I mean, I, I think it's kind of disgusting when people say things like that, because how I see it, at least, I think that... I, I kind of disagree with you, Mr. Fairy Guy. Sorry, I can't remember your name. But I, I disagree with you that, you know, they're just men in, you know, in whatever... I think that it's more of a gender thing. In other words, a more, you know, a more... How it's not about the biological sex, it's about really. the actual oh, gender identity. More of a We're regarding transgenders, genetically or biologically, they're male. In their head, Maybe as biologically, as to some extent. extent. But there's more to it than just biology. I, I think so, too. I, I agree with Taco on this. I mean, I think that... Uh, there's nothing wrong with acknowledging the biology of the situation, but it's messed up when you're just like, oh, you're just a guy that cut their dick off. Like, how is that productive? Yeah, th me and me and um, me and Scratch have been going at it with this one chick on some the the whole Ben Shapiro video. I don't know if everybody saw that where Zoe Tur kind of like. Oh yeah, that was know, fucking hysterical. Yeah, but, yeah, that was but, awesome. But basically, his argument is it's biology, and that's it. And he just wanted to continue to like just repetitiously say that it's about biology, it's about biology, when there's really more to it than just biology. Mm. Yeah, but then again, with the pronoun thing, that's a sign of that's a respect issue more than anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's, it's, yeah, it's well, a sign of respect did... to call someone what they want to be called. But I don't think people should necessarily be attacked and vilified for not using the proper. Like the correct pronouns, the pronouns that someone wants them to use. Well, you know I mean? yeah, yeah, I part with of that, the problem it, with that is nobody knows what pronouns you want to use, especially if you don't fit what is normal. But yeah, what, yeah. Well, that's that another issue too. Looking yeah. at people's intent when it comes to that, if they say you know intently misgendering you in that way, then sure. If we're not going to be talking about the really stupid pronouns that people on Tumblr are making up, I'm fine with he and she, but I don't understand z, 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 whatever. <laughs> no, screw uh, that stuff. And then, like, you got the Tumblr 56 genders. I mean, that's that's not real. But, like, if it's, if it's oh, I feel like maybe I was born oh my God. in a man's body, but I'm a woman, what's going on? Before I forget, hmm. I, just, I just had a sudden thought. What we need, a, a meme time. that we need to put out is the uh, the Baskin Robbins. Uh, was it was it thirty? How many flavors? Thirty one. Thirty one. 31. <laughs> you know, and that that's how many flavors of gender you. Have. Yeah, I, I I've made that joke before. Okay, good. I, I'm glad I'm not the first person to come up with that. It's out of control, though. I don't think that... But here's what I think. I, I don't think it's okay for people to go around and be like, oh, you know, you're just a man, you're just a tranny. And it's and then they'll, in the same breath, they're like, oh, mm. well, you know, I'm the truly progressive person because I accept people. But no, they talk to them like shit when it's one they happen to not agree with. Well, the yeah. thing with me is that I'm actually not transphobic. My issue... Uh, I, okay, let me explain myself here. I didn't originally have any negativity whatsoever towards trans people. I actually thanked them because of the Stonewall riots that was started by uh, cross-dressers and trans people. And all the way up through history, gay rights wouldn't be where it is today without transgender people. So I have to thank transgender people for that specifically. But if and you look at... Let me finish. Let me finish. I, right. I didn't have a problem with it initially until all these fucking social justice feminist types came up. And they're like, oh, oh my pronouns are bun, bunny, and <laughs> star, star self, and well, may, I think that's the know, extreme. And, I, and then after all that shit, and I actually found a social justice warrior defend fucking mayonnaise as a gender, I'm like, you know what, fuck all. Fuck all. I don't, I don't care. You're just well, a man. Fuck you. Until this shit's in... You're a man. Okay, but that's then that's generalizing to the point that everybody within that community thinks that way, and and I don't think any of us would want that generalization aimed our way. Well, if you've looked at if you look at trans people, they haven't always been so kind to um to cross dressers. They actually <laughs> banned them from one of their like they had like a trans walk or something like they banned all the cross dressers. Yeah, they, they, they separated the between um, transgender and transvestite. Uh, well. it, it was actually uh, the straight people in the uh, in the organizers 
that told the crossdressers not to be uh, participating in the uh, you know gay pride walk. Wait, what? Oh. Oh, okay. I, I got because, half the story. Because on the, straight, yeah, it, the straight allies didn't want the transgendered people to feel marginalized or used as a costume, so they told the crossdressers, you can't come here because it's offensive to transgendered people. And Even the offender that someone else on behalf of the walk had expressed that opinion, I assume? The, the transgendered people in the walk didn't actually care. They actually, they actually came up as like, hey, this is bullshit, don't do this. But they, in, the straight people that were organizing it said, no, we don't want to offend transgender people, so the cross-dressers have to go. How is that offensive to transgender people? I mean, isn't that the situation that transgender people are in pre-op? For the most part, I think so. I think the difference in their mind is that for a cross-dresser, they know what gender they are. They're not... Like they don't think they're in the wrong gender. They're just right. like dressing up as the opposite gender for fun or for entertainment for other people. But you know, does that make like their reason. does that make their lifestyle choice less valid? I'm confused. No, I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm oh, not. Oh no, I, I know you're not. Opinion. I know you're not saying that. I'm just questioning what their yeah, reason is supposed know. to it's, be. The, sc the scariest thing is just people being offended on other people's behalf. It's not even the people <laughs> actually affected by this. Yeah, right. well, don't, don't, wear, don't wear Japanese kimonos, but I'm not Japanese. Yeah, yeah, it's, like the, it's like the SJWs that get offended on my behalf when someone calls me a faggot, and I end up having to interject and say, no, 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 I identify as a faggot. That's my pronoun. <laughs> <laughs> faggot, actually, faggot self, leave it alone. No, no, no. My preferred pronouns are cunt, bitch, fag. <laughs> Wait, bag is the to respect. <laughs> My preferred pronouns are mecha, mechanical, and that that guy with a giant dick. Oh wait, <laughs> no, that guy is a giant dick. Sorry. See, and, and well, you gotta specify there. I'm I'm very much in the same boat as, as Scratch on on the whole Jermaine Greer getting no platform because of her opinions. I personally think that there needs to be a lot less of this no platforming because if somebody has a colossally stupid opinion, let them air it and let them let let the the market of, of thought judge it. Exactly. That's always pissed me off about feminists. They're always trying to preach saying, Oh, we support free speech. We love freedom of speech. Oh, but he said something talk. offensive. Censor him, censor him. No, something that we consider offensive on behalf of other groups, and now we're going to censor you, especially if you're a white, cis, hetero male, uh, because apparently, according to some convoluted fairy tale we have, you have, um, you have lived for the entirety of human history and oppressed everyone. Well, the thing that bothers me when they try to say, oh, this is offensive to that group or this group, it's like, how do you even judge how many people of that group are going to be offended by that because if you take it to that level it's like implying that everybody in that particular group thinks and acts the exact same way no, but yet like we're, a, we push individualism and yet at the same time we're putting everybody into collective boxes and saying you can't say that to this group of people it's like, it's like the Halloween post, uh, par uh, costume party I was at just about a week, week and a half ago um, I was dressed up. I'm a, I'm a Romney, okay? It's just a better way to put that in slang terms would be a gypsy. So I was in a Romney ceremonial dress, so I went to this costume party as. Oh, no. And this blue haired bitch came up to me and was like, You shouldn't dress up like that. That's offensive to gypsies. Wow. I'm like, Okay, number one, you don't call me a gypsy because that's very offensive. That's like a black guy uh, wearing, you know, sagging pants and bling and coming up to him and being like, You can't wear that. That's offensive to niggers. <laughs> like, like, okay, if you're going to say something racially offensive, at least don't act like, like you're being the moral superior butthurt one that's concerned. And secondly, <laughs> don't tell the person who it, it's okay. It's like telling a Mexican you can't wear that sombrero. It's like it's a it's Taco, a Taco was, you better change that avatar. I, I was thinking it's been a couple episodes since the N word's been dropped. <laughs> If we want to take it to the illogical extreme, any of the SJWs that run around wearing denim need to stop doing that because that's appropriative of, of uh, late 19th century mining culture in the U.S. West. That's, that's where denim clothing came from. I, I just oh, think it's just so petty and shit. So they don't have a culture to steal. It, uh, no, that, 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 that culture included blacks, 
Mexicans and Eastern Europeans. It was not an ethnic culture, it was a social culture. It's still a culture according to uh, to some groups of SJWs. So, nope, yeah, sorry. Uh, they, 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 they had white people, people so it doesn't yeah. count. Well, um, if, if you look at it, it's just so fucking sorry. petty. It's like every time they go after like the Washington Redskins, like, are we to really sit back and act as if Native Americans, the biggest thing on their mind is that the Washington Redskins exist? Uh, well, and hang on, hang on for a second. Or, uh, or the Seattle uh, Seahawks. Guys, guys. Hey. Hey. Shut up, Mark. Yo! <laughs> Stop quiet. Uh, Lexi, you had something? I, I just said, I just was continuing on what well, basically what Benny said, that, that the mining culture had white people, so it doesn't count. Ah, okay. Cause I, I, sorry, I just, I just, you, you haven't talked much, and you got kind of walked over, so I wanted to at least give you a shot at it. So, we you do gotta, that. We're horrible people, but, you group. know. Go on. My white knighting is done. It's something that... Uh, a friend of mine online, this, uh, I was, as I was talking to him about that whole blue-haired bitch thing, uh, he also went to a Halloween party himself as a costume, or in a costume. You know, what, he, and keep in mind, this dude's a Jew. He's Hebrew. So he goes into this uh, costume party as a Jewish rabbi zombie. And <laughs> so how told him that's really offensive and anti-Semitic. He said, that's really offensive and anti-Semitic. You shouldn't wear that. And he's like, um, I'm a Jew, okay? Fuck off. So he... What, uh, two years ago, I went to a Halloween party dressed in um, replica 13th century Persian garb, and I was told that that was offensive to Middle Easterners. And I pointed out that I had put the better part of a decade into researching 13th century Persia so that I could dress accurately for involvement in medieval recreation, and you should have seen that black girl run. <laughs> the, whole, the whole Halloween issue, it is so fucking petty. It's childish. It is. It's people that have nothing better to complain about. I'm like, and they love complaining. Sakes. Oh, oh, oh where, where is that video again? Um, the skeptic feminist and her first world problems. And and it's it's a Russian-sounding dude, and this girl's leaning on him, just like nodding. And she, she just looks stoned, and they're... When you're bitching about your first world problems, when there's real problems, yeah, the first world problems that feminism brings up, Halloween and whether or not transvestites can be supportive to a transgender walk and man spreading and how denying a fat woman's sex is now technically rape somehow. That one was <laughs> great. Let's talk about that video because that video really annoyed me because they also somehow made the selective service. A privilege for men because women can't sign up. Wow, it's it's such a privilege. Women you know, can the potential sign up. to be signed yeah, up and being wait, shot wait, wait, wait. at in a foreign That's land. Fun. Fantastic. I mean, women can can't sign wait. up for selective like, service if they want to. Really? Oh. Yeah. 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 yeah they can sign but up, but they're not required to. Well, um, when I when I joined, like I had to do, I did whatever my contract was. My first contract, I think, was like three years, but then. On the side, you have to also sign up for eight years of selective service. That means you'd be um, not, like on a non-active duty kind of. But if there was a war, they could have called me back. But you know, it doesn't matter anymore because they can't call me back. So you guys are fucked, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and just so we're clear, here's something else that's unique about the selective service the way it's written in the U.S. If Benny chooses to move to the U.S. for school and is under the age of 26, even though he is not a U.S. citizen, he is required to sign up. Mm. Wow. I don't so know. I, I, know think that. It, I think it's if he becomes a, a citizen. Not no, a if he tries to enter a university or a college in the U.S., he's required to sign up. I really Could you maybe that. source that just to... Yeah, I don't uh, think that's how that works. Hang on. I, I saw it right on the Selective Service page. No, you 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 link it and then we'll figure it out later. <laughs> Moving on. Hey, uh, Halloween is petty as fuck. Okay. Well, on a related note, I actually did do some um, some field research. I know, oh my god, but um, I went and well, because we were Halloween Halloween shopping anyway. So what I did was I just went and took a picture wherever possible. I was looking for examples where the male costume and the female costume were within where I could put them in frame together so I could prove 
that these are how they're sold, uh, that they're you know basically the male people. And I noticed a trend that's that's something that I at least I haven't noticed to be comment on commented on as much is that basically ma the male costumes are designed to either make you look cool or scary. The women's costumes either look cool or hot. There's the not a whole lot of scary women costumes, and there's not any real kind of I don't know how to put this. Um, but that's what women are choosing. What, right. Why well, are we getting pissed point. with women that's choosing point, something that makes them feel good? It's I mean, plus, plus, it, plus it's still it's still on the market. It's still a product that's on the market, so obviously somebody's buying it. Exactly. Uh, but but it was interesting. But I wanted to kind of basically you know give a give a hey here's what they look like because everybody can go to the website and grab you know cherry pick what they want. I figured fuck it, let's go in the field, see what they actually look like when they're on sale, and it's like you know mic drop. There you go. But if you look at it, the, the women that get these comp, these uh, costumes, are they really doing it for men's attention, or are they doing it for the attention of other women? Uh, either or, both possibly. I, I, I think they're doing it for the attention of other women. Well, there's Just a certain amount women. of competition. It probably depends on whether or not they post a photo of themselves on Instagram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, I, and, I, and I don't mean this in a negative way, because I've gone to a Halloween party specifically for this purpose. They might be going there to get laid. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done that. Well, yeah. I mean, I've done that too. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of party. Kind this. of party where you come home with a, a pumpkin on the end of your dick. <laughs> uh, put a dick over your penis and call yourself dictator. <laughs> if you're a woman, put a limit over it. Hey, wait, hey, hey, that's appropriative of Kevin Logan. What? That's, that's appropriative <laughs> of Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Putting a potato in your dick is appropriative of Kevin Logan, the human tater tot. Stop that. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Me, uh, don't, don't be bad at talking fucking Hitler here. There's, a, there's an old joke where uh, when Clinton was president, uh, that the that the Clintons were going to a Halloween party, and uh, and, and Hillary comes in the room, what wearing basically just a string around her waist, and uh, basically it's dangling a lemon in front of her crotch. And Bill's like, "What the you. fuck is this?" It's like I'm, <laughs> and he's like, "Okay, fine." And he leaves and comes back, and he's got the same thing except it's a potato hanging between his legs. And she's like, "What the hell are you thinking?" She, he's like, "Well, if you want to be a, a sourpuss, I'm going to be a dictator." <laughs> it's, a, it's a stupid <sighs> joke, but I had to tell it. Yeah, it was, pretty, it was pretty bad. No, no, Red, no, you didn't. <laughs> does you does really anybody didn't. want to really picture uh, Hillary Clinton in nothing more than a a, a, sh a string? Stop, stop, stop uh, saying words. <laughs> I have seen some of the worst parts of the internet. Seeing Hillary Clinton naked would not really phase me. And, and let's, be fair, let's be fair, everyone. I know this is going to be startling, but for the right amount of money, I'll I'll throw Hillary a length. Well, we you have to will. offer me her a but, lot of money. But, but, right so, of so money. it's that old quote: "It's not a question of are you a whore; it's just a negotiating price." Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not a whore. I'm just popular. <laughs> God. Oh I my think God. I'm gonna make that my uh, for that uh, uh, old Saints Day episode. I'm gonna make that my uh, my icon in the. Uh, okay. In the We'll pause for a moment and see if we can get a final topic in. Uh, Lexi, since you haven't used as much of the airtime as the rest of us assholes, you got anything? Um, not really. Just I made a video and so did Marking Bad uh, responding to uh, Storida Yuki's video where he wants to like reach out to MRAs and wondering like how you guys would react to that. Huh. I'm not uh, MRA. Well, as, as I recall, there's a couple of people. I think Spina was one of them who were kind of wanted to kind of sort of try and bridge the gap. And I'm not necessarily opposed to that. Um, maybe we can organize something. You know, maybe it's a B list meetup of. Uh, well, know, I'm not sure. See, I I want to know from him uh, whether he's looking for just people who identify as men's rights activists or just people who are sympathetic to the cause or who care about the rights of men and women or like what's he actually looking for that's what I that's what I'd like to know first does any has anyone actually uh, been in contact with uh, with what's him Sir well, Yuki? well actually you you uh, did a response to his video what uh, what was what was he saying 
Uh, basically, he ended his video saying he thought men had issues and that feminists couldn't uh, address them efficiently. So I just gave a list of what I consider to be men's issues and whether he agree with them or not. Uh, he hasn't responded yet, but okay. yeah. Well, it's something definitely worth looking at because I mean, you know, there's um, again, like positive and mentioned, like, just because just because we're you know we may not necessarily. The, the majority of feminists who are basically in charge are, by and large, in my opinion, unreasonable cunts. But that doesn't mean they don't, that there's not anything that, that worth addressing that women deal with. Um, but the people we have to deal with at this point that are in charge are causing more problems than, than helping. But that doesn't mean that there's not some place to go or some, somewhere where we could work, I suppose. Well, um, that doesn't mean that there isn't some groups that are willing to, to reach back to bridge that gap, either. Yeah, they're making non-gendered issues gendered. Yeah, I mean, if but that's curious, that's, I'm not an MRA. So it's it's not out. Hmm? Sorry. Yeah, you lagged out there a bit. Yeah, could you repeat that? Which one? Uh, what's his Glenn. name? Glenn. Glenn. Yeah. Glenn. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying uh, I'm not an MRA, so don't try to slap that shit on me. <laughs> for, all the, for all the feminists out there, when you call these other guys misogynists, you're wrong. But when you call me a misogynist, you're actually right. <laughs> okay. Well, at least you're laying it out there. At least mm. you're honest. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, it's just it gets so tiring. Everybody's a, a misogynist just because you know maybe you have an inquiry into what's something being said. Like, oh, misogynist. Be like, it's it's so fucking tired at this point. Uh, yeah. No, what what annoys me about that term is that. Let, let, let's look at women's issues. We're, we've been looking at women's issues for, well, practically 50 years in some circles, and now we're starting to look at men's issues. And when you do that, you're called a misogynist because you're not looking at women's issues because women's issues are more important. Well, okay, but why are you looking at manspreading or representation in media or those sorts of things? I don't feel represented in media, but it doesn't bother me because I don't feel insecure about it. So... You know, it's just small petty issues. Not not all feminist issues are petty, but a lot of them are small petty issues which are being looked at rather than important men's issues. And I think that's fucking disgusting. And that should be misandrist by these same same standards. Uh, I, I also think it's important to acknowledge that just because, you know, issues are not necessarily gendered, it doesn't necessarily mean that one side doesn't experience them more often than the other. Yeah, what, what I have a problem with there is when things are gendered when they don't need to be, for example, with domestic violence. Or because in, for example, America, it's practically 50-50 according to various studies, but you still no, 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 have no, no, no. these gendered... Hmm? That's incorrect. That's incorrect. Um, yeah. For reciprocal violence, uh, domestic violence is 50-50, meaning if one party initiates, the other one does it, and they also swap back and forth which one initiates. One-sided gender domestic violence is actually the female that's the perpetrator. It's about 70% of, of non-reciprocal domestic violence that's female-initiated. And yep. lesbian relationships have wildly higher domestic and intimate partner violence than homosexual or heterosexual relationships. Mm. Yep. Which is which is completely ignored within like the scope of well, yeah, domestic yeah. violence. Like the okay, thing with so feminism is they start with the assumption, okay, so it it must be a gendered issue because gender matters in everything for some reason, and then they go from there. They don't investigate to see whether gender is an issue and what how it affects things, how it actually affects things in reality. They start with the assumption and then they work from there. Which I, I can always give them the wrong answer. I mean, I can tell you as a as a former army MP that when we got called out to it, you know, nine times out of ten the man went to jail. I mean, looking back on it, it's kind of fucked up because I was in that system and I didn't see it at the time. But you, you know, we look at it and we just see well, who's more damaged, I guess, if you want to use the term, and the other person would go to jail. But we never like. I never, at least, t like took the time to really think, like, well, who started this? Or should both people go to jail? It always just seemed to be the person who had the most injuries, you know, the other person went to jail. And, it's, and here's the thing, is that in that sort of situation, let's say that your, you know, sergeant 
husband comes home from a night at the fucking NCO club. And he's a little shit-faced, and he was supposed to be home for dinner, and you're mad. So you start flinging things at him and, and pounding on him as his wife. Well, if he's shit-faced and finally reacts once and gives you one shot to the mouth, you've got a big bruise as a woman. But he's been dodging glassware and coffee cups, and you've been pounding on him, and you've left three small bruises because men are, on average, 10% larger. So who started it? Who actually did the most visible damage? They're two separate questions that may not have any relation to each other. Yeah. Mm. Well, the I problem just, with that, I, though, is, is it's, it ends up being a he, should, he said, she said kind mm-hmm. of situation, and is. often there wouldn't be any evidence to prove who started it. You know, one of them would say that, yeah, that she started it, but that, that, is, that is so much of the case in domestic and intimate partner violence. I mean, it is it always comes back to he said, she said, but predominant aggressor laws automatically put the larger individual who is least emotionally invested in the in at, that's the person that gets dragged away. So men are not socialized to be emotionally demonstrative and men are on average 10% larger. Well, that's two strikes already. So guess what? You, Mr. NCO that uh, went out and had a couple drinks with your buddies at the end of your shift, you're going to jail regardless of anything else. And the, the way it's handled, it just completely ruins people's lives because, you know... Because now you're a wife it, beater. It, you get, yeah, you get labeled the life, wife beater. you got to go through the court system. It's going to cost you a whole lot of money. And in a lot of cases, they don't have, like... Like, I know, at least myself, I've been charged with domestic violence where it got dropped. But they don't have, like, a way for the... Like, it's forced. Like, the woman can't say, I don't want it to press charges. Like, no, it goes through the court system regardless. So, But by the way, it's totally a patriarchy, guys. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, totally. totally. Yeah. Patriarchy hurts men, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's patriarchy backfiring, because men are so <laughs> stupid. Yeah, apparently. We're it's, so, it's, we're it's a, put together a conspiracy that no one can, uh, no one can successfully prove, so we can hide it for everyone. But we're too stupid to successfully execute it correctly. Yeah, so to be honest, if, familiar. If, if men were to create a patriarchy, I think they'd actually do a better job of it than this. <laughs> well, I would and hope they would so. actively keep women down, you know. And you know, uh, you you as a really woman, feel like, like, and you as a woman wouldn't feel like you could send a fucking letter to someone's employer and get them fired. And we bring it around to the beginning. <laughs> yeah. But um, all right, let's end the show. <laughs> but uh, we are reaching pretty close to our closing point. So uh, once again, I, I'd like to plug. Uh, see if we can get some plugs in. And this time, I'll give you a little bit of warning in advance because I'm going to go first. Um, uh, I'd like to plug some books, particularly sci-fi. If anybody has anything good, um, and in relevant reference to what we're talking about now, I thought I would go ahead and plug uh, *Man Kazin Wars*. Uh, it's not a single book, obviously. It's a series. Uh, it's been a, it's it, it, it basically it's an anthology series uh, about Le- in, set in Larry Niven's known universe. Uh, it's kind of neat stuff, and its relevance to the current discussion is the Kazin are uh, patriarchs who are su- so successful at it they actually apparently devolved their women to being uh, to, so that they're not sentient, which is fucking weird. And creepy. That's awesome. Yeah, it's creepy. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, it is creepy. But they're the bad guys for the most part. But it's an interesting bunch of books. I highly recommend them. I will warn you in advance, though, since it is an anthology, the writing is, of course, mixed in quality. Um, most of the authors are really good, but there are a few of them where I just went, no, nah, you know, fucking, I'm skipping this shit. But that's okay. You're not missing a whole book. You're just missing maybe a fourth of it. Hmm. Next, uh, Bane, I'll, I'll put you on the spot since you're as the podfather. Got any books uh, to recommend? Dune series by Frank Herbert. Classic. Uh, I would second that recommendation. Uh, it's probably my favorite series of books. Have you read any of the uh, the newer ones written by his son and a couple other people? No, nowhere near as good. Yeah, they're they're not quite. Yeah, it's a different different bunch of stuff. Um, yeah. All right, Benny, what you got? Um, <clears throat> I don't read too many fiction books. But there's one that comes to mind. The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. I, be, I believe that it was by Robert A. Heinlein. Yeah, Heinlein. It's essentially, it's essentially a book where they create a libertarian society of sorts on the moon. 
I think yeah. the tag especially would be very interested. Yeah, it, it's a hard it's hard to go wrong with Heinlein, and, and no matter no matter what the book, really. I mean, there are a few bad ones, but there, there are not very many of them. Uh, Paradox, you're up. Time Traveler Strictly Cash by Spider Robinson. It's a series of short stories of a science fiction nature, and they range from all sorts of crap, uh, usually taking place inside of a bar that uh, where miracles happen. <laughs> Interesting. I think I've heard of that, but it, it's my brain just goes... Tesla is, it features heavily in the books. And uh, while marking it, since you mentioned it, you're up next. Yeah. Uh, I have two. Uh, one is Harrison Bergeron, and I cannot remember who the fuck it's by, and I should remember. Um, Equality of Outcome Society. Yeah. Uh, the other one I have, that's uh, it, it's going to borrow a little bit on Red's suggestion, is uh, the World of Gore novels, where all oh. women <laughs> are nothing but slaves. They refer to themselves in the third person as either this girl or Kajira. Oh, because God. if I'm going to be an offensive fuck, I'm going to go hard on that one. <laughs> oh, you dirty... <laughs> Bitch, work the shaft. This is going to be taken out of context. Hey, Kevin Logan. Yes! <laughs> oh, God. All right, Positive, you're up next. Uh, let's see. Okay, I haven't had a lot of time to read fiction lately. Um, okay, so it's not science fiction, but uh, the last good fiction book I read was called The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. Um, it's, about, it ta it's a mystery that takes place in New Zealand during the gold rush, and it's a really intricate story. That where the it's just really well written, uh, very long. So if you like long fiction that's well written, it's worth reading. So, okay, yeah. I like things that are really long and hard to. Oh wait, sorry. It's not difficult. To, uh, well, yeah, hard. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I could. I <laughs> All right, scratch what you got. Stiff sounds so innocent. Uh, it's a, it's another classic, The Time Machine by H. G. Wells. Oh yeah, wow. Do you, see, you can do a whole talk about Wells and his influence on uh, science fiction as a whole. It's just a fucking ridiculous how much uh, is kind of owed there in a way, in a weird way. Uh, but yeah, The Time Machine is very good. The movie's based on it. Well, the, the old movie based on it wasn't bad. The newer one was kind of awful. Yeah, I, actually, I, like, I liked the one from the 60s. That was good. Yeah, the 60s one was good. Taco, you're up. Oh, wow. I'm not really well-read at all. I mean, I, I'm Just both say dyslexic and... U.S. Military Code of Justice. Taco, and, say Asimov. I, I have actually read the entire uh, Uniform Code of Military Justice, but uh, I, I guess I... Would... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I, I guess I'd go with Atlas Shrugged. Uh, John Galt's speech in it is uh, very long, kind of hard to get through, but uh, I enjoyed it. You know, it's it spoke to my biases... <laughs> yeah, well, I will say I enjoyed the book uh, up until the very the very last speech, that really long one you're talking about. At that point, by the book had already made all of its points, and in my opinion, so I actually kind of skipped through it because I was like, okay, you've said this already earlier in a more interesting scene. But yeah, it's a good book to read. Um, but yeah, it's going to be tough to get through. It's like it's kind of it's like an unto Lord of the Rings in difficulty of getting through. So if that helps anybody. Uh, Violet, you're up. Or, uh, uh, yeah, but... I haven't read much science fiction books, but I do read comics. I think the last one I read was Superman Red Sun, where Superman grew up in Soviet Russia. Oh, yeah, I've read that. That was good. That was some good stuff. You've read everything, right? <laughs> well, no, not really. I just, well, okay, I read a lot, and I read really fast. Red the Red Robot. Mobile gaming. I, well, no, I, Too much Candy Crush, huh? Not exactly. There's a reason for it, but I can't. Uh, it's work related. I'm not going to talk about it. But basically, something I've got to, for testing for work has introduced me to mobile gaming, and I've become kind of addicted. But yeah, positive is right. Anything Asimov. Um, I actually, I'm going to plug something different. There was a, a I think I've talked about before, Sci-Fi Debris is a channel on YouTube, and they have some reviews of the Foundation trilogy that I listened to recently. It's kind of fun. So I'm not, I may try out. They're making that into a TV series, apparently. Huh? They're making that into a TV series, the Foundation oh, series. Oh, dear God. So, I think it's going to be like one of those long-form Netflix, like, oh, good ones. Oh, well, so Hollywood will ruin that. Nice. Yes, that would be bad. Can I recommend a new book? Sure. Another one? 
um, The Giver. It was really good. Uh, utopian slash dystopian uh, future. Mm-hmm. Basically, everybody was all in a perfect world, and they were ignorant about everything, kind of 1984-esque. And there was this one kid who gets a job because uh, everybody's assigned a job mm-hmm. who is supposed to be uh, some sort of thing where they take knowledge of the past where like all this forbidden knowledge and they realize what color and death and all this other stuff is. So it's a really good book. Hmm. Interesting. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of our broadcast time, so I thank you all for showing up into the Satellite of Unrequited Love. Say goodnight, everybody! Hey, watch Night, Fucked yeah. Up Friday! <laughs> yeah, that's true. We'll plug, up, we'll plug our new channel, yeah. our new show, Fucked Up Friday. Yeah, Night, it might everybody. be fucked up. <laughs> so long.